Vanquish is a third-person shooter developed by Platinum Games. It was originally released in 2010 for the PS3 and Xbox 360, and this year the game has become backwards compatible for the Xbox One. I played the game originally on 360 years ago and played it again on the Xbox One for this review. Vanquish is a third-person shooter and features a lot of the same mechanics are standard of the genre, such as cover mechanics, overall control scheme, and level design. If you are familiar with the genre, you will be familiar with the baseline mechanics of Vanquish. How the game differs from the standard games is what makes Vanquish unique and enjoyable. Vanquish differs because of two things, its speed and its depth. I intend for this not to act like a review, but the gameplay critique. I won't speak directly about the story, the cinematics look nice, the dialogue just bad, but I don't think the game is trying to be an incredible story-driven experience. I think I'm justified to not speak about it. But I will give a general overview of the story. Mother Russia has decided to declare war in America by firing a giant space laser into the San Francisco area. And seriously, how the fuck do you allow something like this to be built? You don't think they're gonna fuck shit up with a fucking Death Star? It's not even sneaky, it's small, you can probably see it from Earth. It's a flow in Texas with a laser beam, anyone that allowed this to happen only has themselves to blame. You play as Sam Gideon, an ex-football player that has been given advanced to their armor capable of insane feats of speed and dexterity. Obvious love interest Robert Burns accompanies you, along with this group of marines, and these two main characters have a love and bond that only increases as you go on. Elena is also there, for moral support. Your main goal is to move forward and kill enemies, so you can continue to move forward and kill enemies. It's a simple story that have so much charm. If you have played the game, you can tell how little care I put into this section. If you haven't, just know the story isn't something you'll remember. Trust me, I don't. Visually, this game still looks great considering it's almost a decade old. One of my friends described it as a love child between Gears of War and Halo. The suit looks nice and sleek like a sports car and the gameplay is all about speed, so there's a clear connection between how you look and how you play. Burns gives us all a contrast because he is ripped straight out of Gears of War and would fit right in with the cast. I would like it if Burns was a playable character. The flowing colony you fight around in looks impressive as fuck, and I'm still in awe looking at some shots of the city. Music overall does its job, but I never heard any sound out tracks, just mostly background noise, never tried to be anything more than that, which is fine. Controlling the character is smooth once you get the hang of it, but this game is very fast and requires some quick decision making, so it may take some players a long time to get the hang of things. I've heard people say aiming is difficult on console, so I can only imagine how they must feel while trying to aim while flying at Mach 10. But this game does have a good sense of control, except for the fact that dodge and cover are two different buttons. Why they did this, I'll never know. First, let's speak about the way the Vanquish is like most shooters in its mechanic. You have several weapon types and can carry up to three, and have two grenades, EMPs and explosive. EMPs give a temporary stun to enemies, and these can be used on bosses. These can act like get out of jail free cards in harried situations. Explosives, you know, ex explode. The weapons are all the standard affair of assault rifles, shotgun, rockets, along with some more creative weapon types, but they are all intuitive. I typically kept the assault rifle and heavy assault rifle with some power weapon in the third slot. There's one unique feature that the game has with the weapons, and that's its upgrade system. How it works is that if you pick up a weapon you already have and your weapon's at max ammo, then you upgrade your weapon to the next level, or can pick up an upgrade point if they happen to appear. Upgrades increase the amount of ammo you can carry. The higher levels increase damage and clip size. Taking cover the center affair, you can take cover on walls, chest high walls, and knee high walls, which rolls out of cover and vaults over cover. The levels are all straightforward gauntlets of enemies with some offering flanking paths. Enemies range from smaller robots to larger mini-bosses, and the gameplay features the same gameplay pillars of Gears of War. You go from linear levels to cutscenes, so fucking many cutscenes, and some set pieces with a couple of boss fights. Both games have the feature where the player slowly walks around while speaking to another character over the phone. And I think all of this may lead to some people playing Vanquish in the typical way of third person shooters, namely taking pop shots at enemies behind cover. While the game does let you do this, doing so will not let the player experience the full load of depth that this game has to offer. Vanquish does a fair amount to distinguish itself. The speed of its gameplay is the main way, and so is its over the top animation. In this game, you don't vault over cover, you leap high above it. You don't just sprint, you slide around the battlefield like a rocket powered soccer player on crack. 
Enemies die in an explosive shower of body parts. There's a quickness to everything that separates it from the standard stop and pop shooters that the third person genre is known for. I think the footage should be able to speak for itself, but Vanquish is not just another third person shooter. There are even small details from the standard third person shooter such as not having a way to move between cover to cover, there's no blind firing cover, and you cannot aim grenades. I think the inclusion of not being able to switch from cover is one way the game signifies that cover is a tool and not your only one. I don't see why dodging take cover two different buttons though, shit will never make sense. Almost every mission will feature multiple marines with the player, and if any of them go down in battle you can revive them and be rewarded with a random weapon. Death is also penalized only slightly though. Dying will decrease the level of all your weapons but it only kicks in once per mission. You use an advanced suit of armor that allows for quick traversal around the levels and has a slow feature that you can trigger by aiming while sliding after rolling or after vaulting over cover. You have a bar that indicates how much energy the suit has and depletes while sliding and also by using the slow mobility. The boost is a resource the player will have to be careful with and having it depleted leaves them in a vulnerable state, unable to use the AR mode or the boost slide. There are some attacks like the Argus Core Electromagnetic Wave and the Romanoff Slant Door that overload the suit instantly. Your rolling speed is also lowered in this overloaded state. There's a melee system that does a high amount of damage at the cost of overloading your suit. And the suit's abilities, with the speed that this game has, give it a unique identity and I cannot state enough that this game is just fun to play. If you want to play the game for yourself, this may be a good place to stop. First I want to discuss some of the reasons why I enjoy this game. I've played this game through three times on 360 and played the game again a couple times for this video and still found the game to be unique in the sense of speed and still refreshing to play because of this. So many games have the issue that I find that just moving around is so fucking slow and the slide mechanic gets rid of this entirely. And it's not just the speed, it's the depth to the gameplay. I found more little tricks while playing and then I would watch some videos and discovered even more depth to enjoy. The game is highly replayable and I encourage anyone to play the game again to try to discover something new. I do enjoy games like Gears of War and the Uncharted series and other slow paced third person shooters but the freedom that I feel while sliding around and shooting at foes has not been taught by any other shooter. Depth is a thing that Vanquish has an abundance of and it appears in many ways from the weapons to the boost. Mark Brown has a great video about this game and its depth and I do say some similar things in this video but I try to add some unique ideas of my own. Weapon reloads can be skipped by switching to another weapon during the reload animation. This can be used to instantly reload weapons, or use this to fire one weapon, switch to another, and keep firing. This is a useful strategy against larger foes with higher health, as you can fire off an entire clip before switching to another weapon. The reloads are very fast as is, but this is just another interesting trick for advanced play. There is also the ability to switch weapons while firing another and doing so is quicker than switching weapons in normal way and allows for quick firing of slower weapons like shotguns and rockets. This is where things get interesting though and I want to discuss more about all the ways this boost can be used. So how it works is sliding around depletes the bar and activating the air mode slowly depletes the bar as well. The player triggers air mode anytime they decide to aim while sliding or after a roll or after a vault. An AR mode has so many uses you can trigger it while at an enemy's weak point to deal massive amount of damage. You could throw a grenade and blow it up in midair for greater splash damage. And most players will just discover the basic ways of using this ability and that will be enough for them. But there is so much more for those who want to experiment. There are so many ways to trigger this AR state such as doing the slide melee attack to launch yourself off an enemy or do the same thing off a bit of cover to achieve the same thing while not overcharging your suit. Sliding has many things the player must consider. Slide normally will quickly deplete the boost meter, but it's the quickest way to get around. There's a trick to it though. Notice that your boost is not deplete immediately. It has a delay to it. So you can dodge and slide constantly to move around quickly while not having the boost meter deplete. You can even do this to regain your boost by quickly chaining dodges with slides. Sliding is the quickest way around, but these other tricks allow the player to preserve their boost. And the thing is, no abilities are ever added on top of this system. You can do everything from the start. And even going through all of them here, there's probably more tricks that I have not seen or probably haven't heard of yet. Weapons are all very basic, but all functional. I typically have the two assault rifles because the basic one is fast and accurate, and I use it for long range attacks, while the heavy variant was more powerful, but not as accurate, but more useful at close range. The shotgun can wreck people that are too aggressive, but has a weird issue where it only knocks enemies down instead of doing any damage. 
Rockets are obviously powerful, but need a lock on for better accuracy. I didn't use the lock on on rifle too much because I found it really weak, but it's useful for some situations. Snipers are also there with a mission that basically forces you to snipe. The disc launcher follows this weird arc but locks onto enemies to a degree and ricochets off enemies and off of the environment. The LFE gun can be used to knock down enemies and is effective against the Romanovs. But there's so much about this game that I have issues with. One is the enemy variety. The game slowly introduces new bad guys at a steady rate early on but will repeat the same enemies in almost the exact same setup after a while. There are some good enemy designs though. The Romanovs come in four unique variations and the enemies like the barricade robot offer a good reason to flank. Or the rolling ball robots that roll around like sawing the metal hog but can't be stunned by hitting them enough. You even get to fight against the silver surfer a couple times. But most of the unique enemies don't get enough attention. As the typical encounter will feature a large amount of gorgies, those human sized red robots with some Romanovs mixed in. Occasionally they will add in different large robots but typically this is the setup. The combat is still fun and they do try to mix in enemies in unique areas but it's not enough to save the game from feeling as though it's repeating itself. To be fair, they do have variants on the base gorgies but they will all just look the same to the player. And once you know how to do with one, you know how to do with them all and the only thing that remains is execution. And that's fine but this game could have used more actual boss fights to mix up the gameplay a bit. And remember how I said that there is a couple boss fights? I meant that literally as in there are two boss fights in the entire game and I hated them both. The only thing that can be considered a boss for the first 90% of the game is the Argus Core, and this fight gets repeated three times with the second just being two of them at once. I do like this fight, it is a simple fight, with the weak points being very obvious, and I like how damaging them will make their core easy to hit and this causes them to send out an electromagnetic wave as a defense. But once you see this guy once, you know how to fight him, there is no challenge beyond repeating the same thing. And the weak points are so large that you can hit them from anywhere. So you can easily just stay back, shoot at them with the assault rifle or anything really. The only addition that they make to this fight is missiles on this back, which only makes flanking an even riskier option. So the best option is still to stay in front, dodge the attacks, and hit the massive weak points. Before I continue, I will say I enjoy linear games more than open world, but some of the levels are too restrictive. The worst of which feature the player on very slow moving vehicles, but luckily this isn't very common. Some enemies require flanking, but many of the levels feature multiple enemies pushing towards the player, and this causes the player to fall back into a defensive stance. Vanquish is very punishing against aggressive behavior, and typically will kill you very fast if you act too aggressively. Before someone says this game doesn't want aggression but wants flanking, there are several missions that are very limited in terms of flanking routes, and there are some encounters that outright eliminate it as an option. You are a glass cannon so that makes sense that you don't fight directly but use your speed. But some levels don't allow you to use your speed because you're restricted to a fucking phone box. And even though some enemies require flanking, most allow the player to hit their weak points from the front. So why would you want to put yourself in danger if you're incentivized against it? When the game does offer flanking routes or when the areas are large enough to allow for the mobility to be used, that's where the combat can shine. The very first mission tells the player to flank, but actively tells you not to go forward on some missions later on. To be fair, there are missions where the enemies stand back and allow you to push forward, and these are not the problem. I just wanted to mention the times where this isn't the case, because those are where my issues lie. The issue is that if you are supposed to flank, they should incentivize it and make it necessary. Right now, a good strategy for almost every encounter is just to stand back, pick off the small enemies and then move on to the larger ones or vice versa depending on the situation. The designers know what they want the player to do and should design everything so that they meet the intended experience. Allowing the player to just sit back and have the only test be of their aim and not their knowledge of the mechanics seems lazy. The defense I heard in favor of the developers is that they don't want players who play Vanquish on the base level to feel alienated by the game, like they're doing something wrong, but this can easily backfire if those players don't see everything the game has to offer and it won't test them on anything besides the ability to point and shoot. And the issues don't end there. When in the near death state, your suit will automatically trigger the AR mode. And once triggered, the suit will deplete its boost until empty. This is fine in theory, but its implementation is fucked. For one, if you kill all the enemies around you, there's no way to stop the meter from depleting and triggering the cooldown. The meter will always deplete fully and this can do more harm than good if the player is in danger and falls back and they will remain vulnerable until the meter returns. I think they need a way to stop this, maybe return to cover or not taking damage will return the game to normal, but right now it's just annoying to have the meter deplete when you don't want it to. Your boost doesn't get refilled when this mode is triggered. So if you have none left, then you're fucked. 
This can be easily fixed by refilling the meter when this mode is triggered. Another related issue with this is there were many times when enemies would hit me and I couldn't fully tell where they were. And I mentioned the way that enemies explode upon death, and this clears up the screen, making visibility poor, but not for them, they can still kill you easily. But doesn't end there, there are some attacks that would send me to a near death state, and other times the same attack would just kill me. My only thought is that there is a buff that gets placed on you if you take the same attack repeatedly, then it will kill you later on. But I don't remember seeing this anywhere, and if that is the case, it needs to be explained to the player, and not just have them punished without comprehending what just happened. And if that's the case, it's not a terrible system, but they need to explain it and need to ensure that enemies don't set off the same attack multiple times in a row. If an attack kills you 50% of the time and you can only know what to expect 50% of the time. If you must avoid two attacks, you should have a complete understanding of what kind of damage each of those attacks will do, and only knowing what will happen 50% of the time is just cheap and poor design. Real quick, I want to talk some shit about the story. I won't go into too many details, but there is just too many fucking cutscenes, just too many, just seriously. The beginning of the game highlights this the best, or worst, I should say, with the first 7 minutes just being one overlong cutscene before finally getting to control your character just to walk down the fucking hallway and be sent into another cutscene. And after that cutscene, the game will finally begin. I said earlier that I don't think the story is the main point of the game, so why the fuck must you constantly interrupt me with story moments? Yeah, you can skip them, but you know what you can skip? The moments where your character is talking on the phone, and these constantly happen as well. Their only point is to tell you about your objective, and guess what the objective in every level is? To move forward and kill enemies. That's it. I will say, I was disappointed that the big romance ended in tragedy. Go on. Kiss them, you fool. There are more issues that I have though, the visuals can become a bit samey after a while, and everything just begins to blend together. Very few sections stand out, and the color scheme remains pretty consistent throughout. I am amazed that the camera can somehow suck ass in a third person shooter. Your squadmates can and will block your view and so can other things in the environment. My own fucking body has blocked my view more than once. You can shoot your gun without triggering AR mode after a dodge or vault, but you cannot do the same thing while sliding. Shooting and sliding will always trigger the AR mode. One bug that I found is, if you are positioned in the right way next to a wall, you can shoot through the wall. That's, it's, it's just fucking dumb. It's so easy to do this too. As long as your reticle is over the enemy, you could be able to shoot through the wall. I think it's about time I spoke about the boss fights in this game. There are only two that I count. The Romanovs, BIAs, the Unknown, and all the other large enemy types I consider mini-bosses. Maybe not the Romanovs because they are so common. The only two bosses that I count are Robert Burns and the two bogeys at the end. And these both suck in unique ways. First up, Burns. Burns has a multiple stage boss fight and each stage will have several marines surrounding him. There are three stages to this fight, with each stage being triggered after Lauren Burns' health past a certain threshold, about a third of his health. My first issue is that this fight is not a straight fight, because there are many marines that will spawn to help in Burns and shoot at you. Luckily, the number of marines is limited. My second issue is that the areas you fight them in are all straight, overly linear levels that barely have any roots for flanking. And this forces the player to play like a cover based shooter, taking out the marines or focus and fire on burns to trigger the next stage. The first area literally only has one path forward and will spawn in a lot of marines in this tiny area and the marines can kill a player very quickly and so can burns. So what I did was kill the marines then ship off burns health before doing the same thing after more marines have shown up. On phase 2 you will be stuck on this little drain and this highlights a point I made earlier about being stuck in the fucking phone box. More marines join them and you are tasked to fight them on these small trains which doesn't have a lot of cover. Phase 3 is better because it is a closed off area but still has several marines there. They are all pretty easy to focus on before fight and burn so it's not that bad. This was the only area that I felt as though I could move forward and not be stuck backwards. You didn't kill him, so tragically. The bogeys are the second fight and they have two issues. One is that they move apart making tracking their attacks impossible and two is that the second phase is much easier than the first. And I will say I don't like how these fights are the last two acts of the entire game. More boss fights should have been spread throughout instead of having them only show up at the end of the game. Back to the bogey fight. 
Both bogeys have high damage attacks, but bogey alpha has a sniping attack which does have a sound to accompany it, but if you don't know where he is, this attack will blindside you. His attack also has the issue where getting hit will either send you into a near death state or just instantly kill you. Phase 1 is only difficult because there's two of them in it. Phase 2 just shows how easy their attacks are to dodge once there's only one of them remaining. Phase 2 is just basically a victory lap. You're reduced down to one bogey, whichever one you didn't destroy during the first phase, and they give you an increased boost meter and this allows you to move even faster. I'm in two minds here. On one, I think the first phase was difficult because they wanted to give the player a more cathartic ending to the game. On the other, I think you could just sit back and relax and then finish the game. Because of the first phase, you'll become very familiar with both bogey's attack patterns, and they will move faster in this phase, but they don't gain any new moves. And there isn't a lot to say about this phase, you just fucked them up in one game. I want to end on a positive note though. I enjoy my time with Vanquish, even with the issues that I've stated. I still enjoy the game enough to play it multiple times. I enjoyed the Darkness mission a lot, which is literally copied from Gears of War 2, but it's still an interesting level with the enemy completely unique to this section. The large jellyfish. I love the tanks that you could take control of by shooting the enemies off of them. And there are even more details that I wasn't able to fully cover, like the scoring system, the challenge rooms, which do highlight an issue with the combat, but they're still very fun and a good challenge for those who want it. While in cover, you can throw a cigarette to distract a few enemies and get some shots off. The flamethrower Romanovs can be destroyed by attacking their backs and set off an explosion that damages nearby enemies. And the rocket enemies can be blown up with their own rockets if you do it fast enough. Bulls can be seen, and it's clearly shown in the error mode. The end credit minigame is cool, but I wish you could skip it just to not be tedious on multiple playthroughs. There's a lot to discover in this game's combat, and I do hope for a sequel in the future, at least for more games to take cues from it and start adding depth to their games. Alright, that's it. I would like to thank anyone who views this. I hope I did a good job explaining my viewpoint in the game, and I hope there isn't anything much that I missed. Thank you very much. Goodbye.